yeah it's it, i think to to learn a new language it's it's a job that you need to do every day it's, it's just a little bit every day so Hey guys, what's up? Jesse here from Sweet Academy, helping you get to the next level in English and in life. And I'm actually trying out new intros. So let's try another one. This is Jesse here from Sweet Academy, helping you improve your communication. Which one do you think's better? Let me know. But today we have a very special episode of the More Than English podcast. And I have another guest for you to listen to stories and... Well, listen to somebody else other than me. And then we're going to analyze the, our conversation so we can learn more of our language. But I have a guest. Her name is Thay Sousa. And, well, she'll tell me if I pronounce that correctly. And she is a website designer, a digital marketing expert, and an all-around badass chick. So thank you for joining me, Thais. And if you guys have checked out Sweet Academy, and if you followed the progression of Sweet Academy, the design of the website, what it looked like before, and what it looks like now, the difference is thanks to Thais's handiwork. So Thais, what's up? So thank you for having me here in your podcast that I'm listening all the time and it's a very good podcast for like who is trying to learn English like me. Well, so, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're so kind. Uh, so you, as you know, they, this is the more than English podcast. So we talk about more than just like English things, right? And right. you have a really interesting story uh, because you're Brazilian, but you live in Germany. Yes, right. So, yeah, my name is Thais. The pronunciation for the last name is Souza because I'm from Brazil, but it's uh, Portugal. Uh, last name is from Portugal. And, uh, yeah, I've been living in Germany for almost three years right now. Okay. How do you like it? Uh, Germany, it's a very, like, good place to live. Everything here, at least in Munich. That's the city that I'm living right now. Uh, everything like works, transportation, health, and things like this. The, and the, the city is just amazing. A lot of green space, parks. So I like it very much. Nice. Uh, I don't think I, I don't know, maybe in our first conversation together, we've talked about this and in our first lesson, but why did you choose Germany? Actually, I didn't choose. <laughs> I okay. was chosen, yeah, because uh, someone like found my CV on LinkedIn, and then I started the, the process to move to to Munich. So yeah, it was like just a coincidence. Okay, that's kind of how I chose uh, Busan, South Korea, as opposed to Seoul or another city. I just applied to work in Korea and the recruiter contacted me with a with a school in Busan. Uh, yeah, same thing with me. It was like more related to a job opportunity than like the really I was not I was not uh, expecting to live in German at the past like so. Hmm. And uh were you looking to live abroad or was you just looking for any job at all? Uh, yeah, I was planning to live in abroad for a long time. But like the, the first barrier to, to find a, a job abroad is like have like a better English. So I start to improve on that. Then I start to apply, send some CVs for good companies, but most in the U.S. and Canada. Not so much in Europe. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess to use the English more, right? Yeah. How have you found uh, German people's English? I've heard different people. Some people say that they have a like strong accent and difficult to understand, and other people say they have fantastic English. 
I, I think they have like a fantastic English. It's more, uh, it's not a native, of course, but they speak very well and sounds more like an English for the UK, I think, that it's not so similar with the English for the United States. In the grammar form, in the structure, or the uh, pronunciation? I, I think more in the pronunciation. Mm. They try a little bit to sound like Americans, but at the end they sound more like uh, British English. <laughs> yeah, that little, that British sound, right? Yes, yes. Uh, has it been hard to adjust? How long have you been there? Uh, I've been here for almost two years. Okay. Any plans to move back? No, uh, no, no. I pretend to stay here for at least five years. It's my plan. Okay. Very nice. Uh, and what has been the hardest adjustment about living in Germany? Uh, I think uh, probably I would say like to to be without my family support all the time, my friends. It's sometimes it's kind of lonely here. Uh, and also the weather, that's uh, winter, right? Because in Brazil, we don't have the winter around. It's just about summer. And Even yeah, like all year round where you're from, it's warm yeah, it's, year round? It's warm the entire year in Brazil. And here in the like for three to four months, we have this very like winter with snowing, with a short day, uh, very dark. So it's very different. What time does it get dark there in the winter? It depends. Last year was around 3 to 4, like p.m. was already dark. What? <laughs> yeah. That's a short day. Yeah, yeah. But it's more like just for one or two months, like more January and February. And then it becomes normal again. Okay. Yeah. And where are you from in Brazil? I'm from Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Okay. And so it's warm year round. How, it's, yeah, it's warm. What's the temperature normally like in the winter? Like in the, I guess for there it would be July, August, right? In winter in Brazil, uh, it's in Rio, I think it's around 20 degrees, like summer here. Hmm. Yeah, that's a nice temperature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. So the weather, the climate's probably the hardest adjustment. Yeah, I think so. Do you get around, do you learn, are you learning German? I know you're studying uh, German, yeah. but do you normally use English in the street when you go out or do you try to use your German? Uh, this is another thing, like the language is very difficult. I, I didn't have the opportunity to learn like German as a child. So for me, it's very difficult right now to, to learn the language. And I think for everybody, it's a difficult language. The grammar, it's like impossible. And, uh, but I'm used most of my time English, in the job, of course, on the streets. I try to use as most as I can with my German, but right now my German is very basic. So usually like English. Most English. people like in shops or, you know, asking yeah. directions or something. Normally yeah. I start with German. And then if I don't understand something in the middle, I pass to English. Okay, you changed <laughs> to English. Yeah. Um, and so you're planning on staying in Germany. Where are you in Germany? In Munich. In Munich. It's the south of uh, Germany. It's in the Bavaria uh, area. Region. Um, Region. So are you planning on staying there too? Uh, yes, I like very much here the south. I, I had the opportunity to visit Berlin uh, last month, and uh, I prefer to live here in the south. It's more calm, more quiet. But if uh, you are the type of a person that likes more parties and things like this, so Berlin is the place. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Um, and... Talking about your English learning journey, um, when did you start? Do you guys start in elementary school learning English? Did you start in elementary school or middle school? When do you start? I think we start to learn English in Brazil around the elementary school, 
but it's very, very basic. It's very verb to be all the time. And uh, after that, I mean? start. They, they, in Brazil, they focus a lot on, on grammar. And uh, when you finish the course or in school, we just don't know how to speak. Mm. So we, we have like sometimes a good understanding of the grammar, but we don't know how to speak. So when we realize that we need to speak English for a job or something like this, uh, in my case, uh, I needed to study everything again. Mm. since the basics so because uh in in english of course you know that the, the pronunciation is very different and uh, the way that you use grammar in some kind of situation is also different so i need to learn everything again yeah right you need to relearn everything and that's very common are the classes held mostly in portuguese yes uh, i think in school yes the, t- the teacher speaks a lot of Portuguese to explain and things like this. In the like, if you pay to to have like a course in English, you like start an academy. To, like an academy, you have someone speaking English all the time. But depends like on the course. Like a native speaker. Not a native Not speaker, a like a Brazilian teacher speaking. This is another problem. Like hmm. the, the accent is not the same. Yeah, and that's very common in public schools uh, with foreign languages in public schools. I think uh, mm-hmm. in Korea it was the same way in most foreign in most uh, English classes in the public schools. It was all Korean. That's a common thing that I heard. Like it was all Korean except for just a little bit of English. Here mm-hmm. in Spain, it's the same way. Um, and in the United States, it was the same way when I studied Spanish. You know, it was yeah. most. Because I think it's like, you know, you have a classroom full of 25, 30 students. How many students are in a class in a public school in Brazil? In the public, like at school, it's around 30. Yeah, so around 30. That's a lot. 30 too. or more, yeah. Or more. Oh, one teacher? One teacher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> rough to try to speak all in English, all in a foreign language with mm-hmm. students who don't care. And then they distract yeah. yeah, in the like private courses, it's better. It's around fifteen to twenty uh, students, but in the paid teacher... academy. No, no. Yeah, in the when you pay to wow. have like English classes, but the problem is the 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 teacher is not like native, so they don't use these contractions, forms, and things like this. So when you start to listen real English, you have some kind of difficult to understand, like the this part. Yeah, that's a common thing I hear too, that, you know, you get used to certain, uh, like classroom English, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, uh, how old are you? And <laughs> I am fine, thank you, and you. And people don't talk like that. And then, um, like I talked to somebody last week, and you know, when they were watching movies, they were completely lost because it's a very short conversations and slang and then everyone talking over each other in short sentences. It's, uh, it's, it's difficult. It's different. Yeah. And, uh, we don't like use a lot of phrasal verbs also. So I, I, I think just at the end when I decided to study English on my own that I discover like phrasal verbs and words like pick up that you guys use it all the time. So Yeah. Oh, all the time. All the time. Yeah, all it's the time. incredible. Yeah. Uh so about that, when you started to really study and really improve, what did you do and how did you how did you start? Take me through a little bit of your story. So I started uh, with an online course uh, that I was more related to understand like real native English. I did that course for six months. And then after that, I started to have classes with you and other teachers in italki to improve my pronunciation and like my my conversation skills in general. 
and uh, yes. So this course that you took, was it like a video course that you watched a video and did some exercises and things like that? It was like a course that I think it's, it's kind of famous in Brazil. It's a Mairo Vergara course. This is the name of the teacher. And you, rece you receive like some kind of text with audio. Okay. So you read the text and translate every word. And read then it in read Portuguese. In Portuguese. And translate and it into English. Yes. And then after that, you listen the audio and start to understand like the, the way that sentences are formed. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Yeah, was uh, that course helped me a lot uh, to understand like more more sentences and to increase my vocabulary that at the time was not so good. And but I think what helped me most was to start to talking with uh, like a native teacher and see that I was doing like the same mistakes again and again uh, and seeing that after a while I know that. At this start, it's it's kind of a boring for the for the students. We think you'll never be able to speak better English, but after some months, you start to, to fix and improve yourself. So, yeah, it's it, I think to to learn a new language, it's it's a job that you need to do every day. It's, it's just a little bit every day. So, yeah. Definitely. And that's something, like you said, it can be boring, can it sometimes, you, especially when you review the same things again and again. And, and you kind of feel for a while and tell me if you if you feel the same way, because I feel this in Spanish, that, you know, learning language, is kind of like a plateau stairs, mm -hmm. right? And you yes. get to you get to a wall and you think, when am I going to learn this? When am <laughs> I going to get it? And then suddenly you get it. And yeah, <laughs> you don't yeah. know why. Is that same and, thing and, happen for you? And not, it's not always like that you are increasing the chart. Sometimes you are like just going down. So <laughs> I wake true. up and it feels like, oh, I don't know how to speak in English anymore. It's it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> I, a roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually true. That's actually true. I've never thought of it. It's not really even like no, that, no. right? It's sometimes like... Eh. So with a lot of curves. <laughs> a lot of ups and downs. It's like a business chart, right? Yes. Hopefully uh, the general progression is going up. Great. So that was part one of our interview. Next week, you'll hear part two where she talks a little bit more about language learning and goes into what she does for a living. So you'll get a lot of good vocabulary as far as the digital world user interfaces, website design, things like that. She's going to talk about what she does as her job. So stay tuned. Be sure you come back for that. If you are not subscribed here on YouTube, then go to my YouTube channel and click the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every week when we upload a video. I hope you enjoyed this conversation and I hope you've learned a lot of language and about conversation. If you had problems listening to anything, then go back and listen again. That will help you. Now, I'd like to break down some of the language that we said, some of the useful expressions and vocabulary, and some of the corrections from Thais is speaking. There are some common mistakes, and I'd like to look at those right now. So now let's look at the language that was used. I have 15 expressions here and vocabulary words that I'd like to review and teach you. First thing I said, you get to listen to somebody else other than me, other than something, other than me, other than you, other than that. It just means instead of or rather than. Uh, another option. Right? So, A other than B. I'd like to verb A other than B. Other than. Next, I said this. This has three parts. An all-around badass chick. 
an all around badass chick. And this is a very slangy, natural expression. It was fun to say because I wanted to teach these things. There are three parts of these that I'd like to highlight. An all-around something, that's an adjective. And that just means like in total or summary. An all-around good guy. And it means he's a good guy in every aspect. An all-around professional. He's professional in every area. Next, badass. If something is badass, and it can be a noun, usually it's an adjective. Badass means something that's really cool or awesome or impressive, right? So a movie can be badass. A song or a concert, more specifically, can be badass. That's a badass concert. Right? It's very slang, so kind of be careful when you use it. It's not formal at all. (laughs) And don't use it on a speaking exam, generally. Uh, And then a chick. A chick is another slang word for girl. So if you're in the United States, maybe some girls might be offended. Some people can be sensitive about this sort of thing. But you've got to be careful in how you use it. Right? You can use it as a compliment, but a chick, an all around badass chick. Very informal. Next, somebody's handiwork. Handiwork means the work that somebody's done. Usually, a specialized work like a contractor, a builder, a sculptor, some sort of specialized work done with the hands. In this case, the website. It's a result of her handiwork. It's a noun, so we use her handiwork, my handiwork, his handiwork, your handiwork. Next, Portuguese. This was one of the errors, and she said a Portugal last name. You know, she was a little nervous before the interview. So, uh, and by the way, I didn't correct any of her errors intentionally because I wanted to keep the flow of conversation. So, but here it's a Portuguese last name, a Portuguese. Portuguese is the adjective form, right? So it's used for people, language, culture, food, etc. Next, just, she used this phenomenally. Perfect. It's a nice fluency builder. On Sweet Academy, I have a course just on the word just, just on the word just. You see it there. I used it there. Adding just correctly in your sentences is a great way to sound more fluent and to add emphasis. So emphasis if something is the only thing or emphasis as if something is special. The city is just amazing. That was a fantastic expression. The city is just amazing. Well done. Next, we've worked on this in class. So she pronounced this word correctly. It's great when you see a student using what you go over in class. LinkedIn. It's not LinkedIn or something like that. The pronunciation, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. And it kind of sounds like din. So move the D. Remember, I've gone over this before. I go over this in the idioms course that I have, several courses that I have on Sweet Academy. When a word follows an ED and the next word starts in a vowel, move that ED over with the vowel. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Same thing like pick up. Pick up. That consonant k goes with up. Cup. Pick up. Pick up. It's a nice little trick that will help your pronunciation a lot. Next, in the. In the, it means that it's an example of something. So, in the pronunciation, in the structure, in the way something is done, right? In the, that's a good word group to know. In the way. Do something a certain way. If you do something a certain way, you do it in a way, right? 
Next, plan to verb. Plan and then to verb or plan on verbing. This is a grammar lesson. And this one, she said pretend to stay here. I don't pretend to stay here. And it sounded almost like that is a false friend in Portuguese. If any of you are Portuguese or Portuguese speakers, then let me know if pretend here was a false friend with plan. Like if you make a plan to do something because it kind of looks like it can. Pre means before. So pretend it could be a false friend, meaning you plan to do something. But in English, we don't say pretend. Pretend in English means to imagine something. So let me know if that is a false friend in English and Portuguese. I should have actually said some. This is one that I should have asked her during our conversation. It would have been valuable. So that was my mistake. But you can tell me in the comments below. Next, an all year round. Year round. If something happens all year round, it means the entire year, right? All year round, all year round. You tell me, all year round, all year round. It means the entire year. Next, a region is an area of a country or continent, right? She called it the Bavaria region. It's also an area like the Northeast region. Scandinavian region, a region is an area of a country or a continent, the region. If something is the place to be, it's the best place for something. If you like to party, she said, Berlin is the place to be, is the place to be. This is a good expression to learn. So learn this. If you have a notebook, write this in the notebook. Something is the place to be. If you're into art and fashion in the United States and you want to pursue a career in that, New York is the place to be. If you're in the United States and you want to pursue a career in technology, Silicon Valley, California is the place to be. Is the place to be. Is the place to be. Next, the prefix re to relearn is to learn again. I had to relearn everything. That's what we said in there. And finally, another expression, very useful. Write this down. If you talk over each other, it means you're talking at the same time. And the idea of one person starts talking and then the other one starts and the other person talks a little louder and the other person talks a little louder and you're just talking over each other. You're talking at the same time. And in real conversation, that happens all the time. People are talking over each other. People are talking over each other. So thank you for this. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Let me know if you enjoy these conversations with other people. I certainly enjoy them. I enjoy hearing other people's stories. I enjoy hearing other people's, the way they use English. It's very valuable, especially for you as a learner to get other people, how other people use the language. Another reason I don't correct during our conversation, well, to keep the flow, but also to help you understand and be able to try to follow a story if somebody doesn't have native pronunciation, if somebody makes some errors, if somebody uses an incorrect word. Can you, it's a good challenge, can you grab the context? Can you understand the context and understand the conversation based on the context? That's a good exercise for you. So that is it for me. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching. Be sure to visit Sweet Academy for notes to go along with this. And, and you can join the More Than English podcast course which I have extra PDFs that you can go and learn and study that with this. I'm going to have video lessons to go along with these extra lessons so you can improve your conversation and you can improve your vocabulary range and 
learn expressions and fluency builders to become a better speaker. So check that out, sweetacademy.com. Also, feel free to sign up for a class. Thais, I know Thais because she was and is a student of mine, right? She signed up for a one-on-one class and we've known each other and we've gotten to know each other through that. So I always enjoy meeting people from all over the world. We all have interesting stories. We all have fun stories. And I'd like to hear yours. So check me out at sweetacademy.com. That's it for me. Remember, do something nice for somebody before they can do it for you. Pay it forward. Be good or be good at it. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you next time.